And you are doing it. You are doing it. Not as much now. Um, in the last uh, few years since we moved here, uh, when I was in the Bay Area, I used to do a lot of it. Uh, people would come over to, to either my house or I, uh, and, and I have a, a massage table from one of the people that actually I did the energy work. They donated a massage table to me. So, uh, so that was really, that was wonderful. It was a beautiful uh, gesture. And then I, I, I would do that there. And then like on Thursday nights, and this is all happening in the Bay Area in California, California in Fremont, actually, I would go over to that professor's house, and uh, and he had a big house, a uh, big living room, huge living room, uh, and um, every Thursday evening we would gather, and there'd be maybe like a half a dozen to ten people, it depends, it depended each night, and we would set up chairs in a circle uh, yeah, with the everybody facing inside, but it was a wide circle, okay, um, and I would go behind the people to each person and I would do some energy healing for them. And the reactions of the people were completely different, astounding. Um, some people were, excuse me, were very sensitive to, to the energy and they would like, they would manifest it in, the, in, in the contorting their bodies and all kinds of other, other stuff. Um, and um, uh, so, uh, so I was doing a lot over there. Um, and when I moved over here, I was doing a little bit. I was also doing some long distance healing then, but not as much. But after moving here, since I didn't really know that many people, I just started doing, uh, uh, you know, mostly like long distance healing. So I've done long distance healing for people. And where over. where are you, Norberto? Where? In Richmond. In, in, in Richmond. Okay. Huh. So so that's so so that's what I do. I I. I don't advertise. Um, I kind of figured um, I'd go crazy if I advertise for free and people are going to start, like everybody's going to come out of the woodwork and want to do healing. And then I'll be like up 24 seven and still not be able to fulfill anything. So, uh, so I decided that, you know, if people come to me, they come to me, you know, and uh, uh, sometimes I'll, 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 t I'll take the initiative and I'll ask somebody to, uh, if they want to, if they want healing or whatever. Um, but usually what I found is it's kind of funny how people react. Um, I can do the healing for them and they can, they can usually feel it very well uh, and uh, have, have a really great after effect of it. Has a really good effect. But when um, it's funny when I tell people, you know, uh, I'll, you know, I do it for free. Then they say, ah, it's nothing. It can't be anything. It's very free, right? It's free. But other healers, they charge like, you know, $100, $500 for a healing and that sort of thing. Everybody flocks to them, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, I, but I, can't, I can't charge. I, I, I refuse to charge money. So, so it's, really, it's really funny that people's mentality is that way. But I figured, well, okay, it's, it's fine. And Roberta, do you want your email address below this video so people can contact you? Um, sure. Okay. okay. We have a question also here from uh, Apulia. She was on the uh, New York City uh, meetup well, with Richard Dolan, and I was on it over a week ago. But I invited everyone there to join our meetup, and she's the first one to join. So Apulia, do you pronounce it Apulia? Apulia, yeah. This is just you, a nickname. <laughs> are, are you in New York? Yes, I am. So greetings from New York City, from Manhattan. Um, Yes, I, I joined the meetup because I heard Brian speak at the Zoom meeting on Richard Dolan's membership global meetup uh, media meeting, and I'm a member of that group, of course. He was such a good speaker that I wanted to come on to hear his comments on the Alien Agenda book. Unfortunately, I missed that. But I, I think I, you just I came for my good looks. It wasn't a good speaker. It's just my good <laughs> looks, right? I think that was it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and I do have a question uh, for the speaker. 
I wanted to know if you separate your extraterrestrial experiences from other spiritual experiences, or do you consider them one and the same? That's a very good question. Um, I kind of do have that, that separation, but um, intuitively, I know that they are completely connected. They're all the same. Uh, it's just different manifestations, perhaps. Uh, um, I, I kind of look at it from the point of view of my timeline, like when I started learning, uh, like doing the, the, the healing Qigong. Um, that I was doing the Qigong before my that abduction, um, I did, and I think I had the vision before the abduction. But it was yeah. So, but what happened was that um, after the abduction, I think that's when, um, and I don't know if it's just a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences, but uh, but that's when I was able to start manifesting the healing, and people be able to like my wife and other people be able to feel uh, the energy. So, uh, so, and, 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 I, and I constantly think to myself, why, I mean, uh, one of the questions I have uh, is, is always is, did, did the ET connection come first and then the ener energy healing uh, thing develop from that? Or did the energy thing come first and then the aliens he's noticed it and that that's why they kind of contacted me or they they so they can't come forward you know it's sort of chicken and egg kind of thing i have no idea yes yeah, there's some uh, people who believe i've read that there's like an, uh, an overlap and in that overlap the alien the extraterrestrial uh beings or experiences can flood into our space here but mm. that we also have a spiritual space here that's not that is connected, but not really part of the other. There's like a a meeting place. So sure. I, I'm always curious uh, uh, when someone has such detailed experience as yourself, whether they feel that way or not. I've had experiences, but not to the the detail like yours. Oh, and okay. It, yeah, thank you. I, I I think that that what you said is is kind of the way I look at it too, because. You know, um, like I say, they, they are sort of separate in my mind, but they are not because, because like the way I look, the way I look at it is that the universe is, the creation is one whole, un, un, undivided thing. And, uh, and that uh, everybody, like us, uh, you know, call of human beings, homo sapiens sapiens, uh, or uh, or uh, the ETs, whatever race of ETs, or everybody is, is is made of the same stuff, exactly the same. I mean, we are. It's just it's just like are these are these beings more spiritually developed? Maybe some are, maybe some aren't. Uh, you know, uh, you, you you know, but whatever mechanism in the universe is at work, uh, creating what we see as our three D physical space, is. Um, really uh the same thing for everybody it it, 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 it doesn't it, it's not different on planet x or planet z or or uh or on earth or whatever or in the andromeda galaxy or whatever it is it, it, it's everywhere it's exactly the same uh different different beings have different experiences of course uh and maybe that's why everybody lives in sort of different realms or different in the physical in the physical space uh and uh they have de they have developed differently and whatnot but but uh you know it's like everybody's the same everybody's part of everybody else and uh, and i think that goes to the also to the to the uh whole uh issue of you know what's called telepathy and uh, telekinesis and and everything else so anyway sorry sorry for for the rant <laughs> thank you yeah, I'd like to comment on that, Norberto. Like, I'm a Buddhist teacher for the last 25 years, and what he said reminds me of Buddhist cosmology. The Buddhist scribe, you know, we're on this earth, and there's like the, the five realms of existence. There's the human realm. Above that, there's levels of heaven. There's six central spheres, and then the Brahma realm above that. That could include various aliens. Like, he specifically talked about reptilians. He called them Nagas, shape-shifting 
and and how there's a, a Brahma of a thousand worlds, a thousand world systems, meaning a thousand solar systems is encompassed by one Brahma, according to the Buddha. So um, kind of implies each, it's kind of like the same everywhere. You're saying that it's basically the same all through the universe and we're in this human realm and there's realms above us and it's very difficult for us to understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm always trying to merge what I know about ufology with Buddhism, I've engaged with several Buddhist monks. We say, oh, no, no, I don't want to talk about that. You know, my reputation, we've got to get donations for the monastery. Oh, it sounds too yeah. weird, but they know about it. You know, they know about it. And they have some private conversations with me about it. If you see that chat, though, that, that people will, who are supposedly seekers of knowledge of, of quote-unquote truth, whatever that is, uh, uh, they tend to uh, disavow any of this kind of stuff, even though uh, it is obviously completely and utterly real, and just it's, it's just that people, you know, uh, you know, starting with governments and, and most people. Like I remember before when I was I was talking about uh, my uh, uh, somebody was mentioning about the uh, uh, um, uh, Mimi perhaps was talking about uh, friends and stuff, things like that. Um, you know, there were. Um, there was a time after my abduction and uh, that, and I used to uh, meet with a friend of mine. We used to work together, a coworker of mine. Uh, we used to meet, meet together all the time. We had like a lot of, a lot of our own interests that were common. Like for example, we were both Trekkies. We both loved Star Trek and everything. We would discuss TV shows and things at lunch and stuff like that. And, um, and, after my abduction, and, and he was really friendly, and we would get, you know, we, 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 we were good buddies. And one day after the abduction, I decided to uh, try to let him in on it because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, this is a, this is a mind bending thing that happened to me. It's a great and amazing thing that happened to me. So I said, uh, I started to bring it up and, I, and I, I started talking and telling him a little bit about it. And as I went on, I, I carefully watched his facial expression and his facial expression went from one being friendly to starting to look like getting very angry and very like upset. So I stopped completely. I just, I just, I just said, nah, never mind. He, he will not, he will not go for this thing. You know, he won't, he won't believe it. So, yeah. So, so even, even people who you consider our friends, uh, you know, they, they're, I mean, everybody's different and everybody has their own time of developing or understanding. And uh, some people are, are, are further along than others and, and uh, less open uh, than others and uh, like you know, the beginning stages and that sort of thing. So anyways, um, yeah, it's really hard to talk to people about that. Yeah, I think we all go through that. And you can read it in the comments section of videos. A lot of people dump on it. Oh, they don't exist. Oh, yeah. I've seen those comments. Yeah, like like very, yeah, they're very, uh, how to put it, ignorant. <laughs> yeah, we get, you get comments from these flat earthers. Well, the Earth's flat. There's a dome. Space does not exist. You know, rockets can't get up in space. But, oh, my gosh, this is not true. The world's not flat. But you get all this, these trolls all the time. I've had a lot of comments. We just get used to this stuff. Let it bounce yeah, off yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. I just ignore it, you know, basically. I think the important thing is that um, we all lose our fear because I held on to my story for 50 years. And I'll tell you, after 50 years, the friends that I told were angry. Mm. They said, well, if it's true, why didn't you tell me before? Mm. And it was because I didn't want to have this reaction before. Yeah, exactly. Friendship. exactly. And yeah. usually that ended the friendship. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so I was quiet for 50 years, as I say in my bio. Yeah. But there comes a time, and I think this is at the time is now, when we can't expect government disclosure. We can't, we're, we're no. experiencing the weirdest world. And the, really, all we have is our own truth, what we know to be truth that happened in our lives. And we have to be able to tell each other that so that we know that there's huge numbers of us, that we're not strange, that we're not crazy, you know, that, that these things really are happening. I mean, some of the things that you said happened to you in school yeah, happened to me in school. I was born in 53. 
and they did all kinds of psychic tests, you know, and, and certain children would be taken off to a room and, and made to push pencils and stuff with their mind. But they were looking for us. They were looking for us in those days to put us in, in certain programs. And then some people went into those programs. I don't think that I did. I don't think I did either. You know, I know that I, I know that you know um, over the years, as a kind of a, 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 as a lark, I would I would see like I like I'm sitting at my computer desk and I see a pencil or something or a pen on my desk and I I I automatically I'm trying to try to try to try to feel the energy of the pen and try to move it you know and I'm, I'm thinking to myself like I'm chuckling to myself oh right yeah right. <laughs> And uh, but uh, but it's uh, but I, I do believe it's possible and uh, <clears throat> it's just like the healing um, when like I never thought that first of all I didn't think, I never thought that she was real I thought it was like a like a theoretical kind of construct a mind construct to, to be able to do certain things a bit easier in a different way it would be things easier uh, and I did not expect that. Uh, she was was an actual thing and then when i started doing this and people started feeding back to me that they felt this energy even people long distance i mean i got like weird feedback from people long distance like for example um uh, a few years ago um uh, one of the other experiences from the bay area group had moved out to uh florida and um and uh I, and, and she asked me to do a, a healing for her, a long distance healing. And when I started doing the healing, uh, like one of the things I did for her was a, a chakra sort of tune up and, and, and healing, that sort of thing. And when I came to her, her uh, heart chakra, uh, and this is really weird because I'm not a religious person. I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't follow religions per se. Um, I, I saw very clearly i have this image of jesus in my mind and i thought wow i was like wow that's that's weird you know so so i i i i put it i put it aside and i kept going and then i went and got to her crown chakra i saw this humongous chunk crown chakra humongous and i think like that's really bizarre too so later when i contacted her um i told her that i saw uh this image of she asked me if we saw anything weird i said i saw this this image of jesus when i went to to your to your heart chakra and she says uh, I, what i didn't know was she was a very devout christian okay mm. and when i was doing the healing for her she was lying down she had a bible on her chest so it's just, it's just with, with, with this picture in my mind of jesus i'm thinking wow weird and then when i got to her crown chakra i said the other thing, weird thing i saw was your crown chakra is very huge and she got like so happy she was oh thank you thank you thank you i've been working on my crown chakra to make it big Try to make it bigger, <laughs> you know. Wow, it's like so. These kind of things do communicate, and they and they do happen. And I don't know how they happen, and it don't often happen, but they do happen. I'm going to share a story with you, Norberto. Yeah. When I was 37, um, they found cervical cancer on me, okay. and so I went to the hospital, and the hospital wanted to do a hysterectomy. And my husband and I were not sure that we didn't want another child. Okay. So we decided to go for an alternative route. And I found myself a Shagun master here in Vancouver. Okay. And he and his wife worked on me with acupuncture and Shagun okay. um, and some herbs for three months. I used to see them three times a week. They did the acupuncture. We did the Shagun exercises. They taught me the inner smile and all of these things. Um, the inner smile was particularly important. They felt for healing in inner organs. And so I did that every day and I took herbs. And then when I went back to the hospital three months later, there was no cancer. Yeah. And I they wouldn't that. admit it. They would not admit that any alternative medicine would have done oh, no, it. they won't no they, they, they won't you know? they said that there must have been a mistake in the initial scan actually this, this, but this, there wasn't there wasn't the was and, gone. and this happens quite often actually with yeah with other alternative healing methods um and the the thing is that um that's why like 
you know, after my abduction, I mentioned those five things that happened to me. And one of those things was I became very aware of, you know, the political thing, the whole, the whole uh, web of lies, basically, uh, mm. of all these things. And that includes mainstream science and mainstream medicine. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, you know, and, and I, I just do not trust uh, those things when they talk about, like, for example, like black holes and string theory and, uh, and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's, uh, it's um, and Big Bang. It's like, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 would rather, I would rather write my own science fiction, much better science fiction than that. <laughs> so, so anyway, so. Um, well, that, that made me a believer in alternative medicine. Yes. which I, you know, I still hold dear till this day. Yes. Um, and I became a herbalist actually after oh, that. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. It really worked for me. And I, and I think it works for people. It costs a lot of money. Unfortunately, you can't put it through your regular channels, you know, exactly. well, like there's you have a, to there's have a, a bit of money in your pocket, but it's, it's, it's designed that way. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Norberta, I agree with you about the uh, Big Bang Theory, black holes. I think a lot of our science has been fed to us by the globalists, and I don't trust that they might be making stuff up. Mm-hmm.